Hi everyone and welcome back to another video where we try to build a neural network from scratch for MNIST classification. We also dive deep into the mathematical concepts regarding the scene. So we provide a detailed mathematical and theoretical explanation of building a neural network from scratch to classify handwritten digits in the data set. We also focus on the core machine learning concepts and derive the necessary equations covering forward propagation, loss computation, back propagation, gra gradient descent and evaluation. The implementation uses Python and NumPy, but the emphasis here is on the underlying mach machine learning concepts and the math. So what is a neural network? Mu neural network is a computational model inspired by the biological neurons, widely used in machine learning as a universal function approximator for modeling complex or nonlinear relationships. For the MNIST dataset, we construct a feed forward neural network with three layers an input layer of 784 neurons corresponding to the flattened pixels of a 28 by 28 MNIST image representing a vector of 784 dimensions. The hidden layer has 128 neurons designed to learn intermediate features such as edges or shapes with weights such as this and output one for each digit class with weights and biases as shown over here. Uh, the network performs supervised learning given label data that is the images and the digit labels and it learns to map input to outputs by the network performs supervised learning given label data that is images and digit labels it learns to map inputs to outputs by optimizing weights and biases to minimize the loss function using gradient descent each network computes a weighted sum of its inputs adds a bias and applies an activation function enabling the network to capture non-linear patterns so now we go forward to loading and pre-processing the data so here what we do actually is the we see that the data set comprises of 70,000 grayscale images of handwritten digits each comprising of 28 by 28 pixel yielding 78 784 features per image so the pixel values range from 0 to 255 which we normalize to 0 to 1 by dividing by 255 as we can see here the normalization ensures features are on the same scale facilitating convergence in gradient descent and preventing numerical instability. We split the data set into 80% for training and 20% for testing. The labels are one hot encoded as we'll see here as we move on to here, the code, code implementation that the labels are one hot encoded to match the output layer. For a digit k, the label becomes a vector of as you can see here where y, y of k is one and all the other entries are zero. For example, the digit five becomes as you can see over here. This is the representation for the digit five. One hot encoding aligns the cross entropy function used for multi class classification, enabling the network to compute the error between the predicted probabilities and the true labels. Now, coming back to the forward propagation, the, this is the actual math behind the predictions where we understand that the forward propagation is the process of passing input data through the network to generate predictions. We break this down layer by layer, focusing on the mathematical computation. This is a matrix as shown. The hidden layer computes a linear transformation as shown over here and where w1 and b1 is given and z1 is computed and we apply the ReLU which is rectified linear unit activation function to introduce non-linearity so now this is the non-linearity introduced ReLU sets uh, negative values to zero allowing the network model to model complex patterns in machine learning non-linearity is crucial because linear transformation alone cannot capture intricate relationships such as the digit shapes of the digit ReLU also mitigates the vanishing gradient problem as its derivative is one for positive inputs, ensuring efficient gradient flow during training. Now coming to the output layer, the output layer takes the hidden activations A1 and computes another linear transformation where W, B2 is given and Z2 is computed. These are the raw scores logits for each class. To convert logits into probabilities, we apply the softmax function as shown over here. This is the softmax function given. For numerical stability, we subtract the maximum logit before exponentiating. This is the actual logic that we use over here. The output A2 is a probability distribution over the 10 digit classes for each example, summing up to one. Then a machine learning softmax is ideal for multi-class classification as it provides interpretable probabilities for comparison with true, la with true labels. Loss. To measure the error between prediction and true labels, we use cross entropy loss defined as shown over here as shown over here. For a single example with true class K, the loss now gets simplified to this. If the loss is small, when the loss is small, when this value becomes approximately one and the loss is large when the value approximately is zero. 
penalizing incorrect predictions. In machine learning, cross entropy loss is derived from information theory. It quantifies the difference between two probability distributions. It can also corresponds to the negative log likelihood of the data under a multinomial logistic regression model. Meaning, minimizing this loss maximizes the likelihood of the correct class. Our objective is to adjust the parameters W1, B1 and W2, B2 to minimize the loss. The backward basically meaning that we have the weights and biases to be adjusted in such a to be adjusted in a such a manner to minimize the loss. Now backward propagation. Backward propagation computes the gradients of the loss with the respect to all parameters, enabling optimization. We derive these gradients layer by layer using the chain rule. Output gradient, output layer gradients. We start with the gradient of the loss with respect to Z2. Given that the loss entropy and softmax activation function, the derivative simplifies to this. The result is a cornerstone in ML for softmax regression. To understand why, consider the loss as shown over here, where E2K is, soft, is equal to softmax of Z2K. The derivative in, involves we compute the gradients for the output layer parameters as shown over here. Here, this matching over here. Next, we have hidden layer gradients where we propagate the error back to the hidden layer. The gradient with respect to A1 is as shown as shown over here. Adjusting the further value activation, the gradient with respect to Z1 is given as shown where the deriv derivative of ReLU is given as this. So this element operation ensures that gradients only flow through neurons that were active during the forward pass, a key feature for ReLU that enhances training efficiency by introducing sparsity. Finally, the gradients for the hidden layer parameters are as shown over here. The, the, the next, we move on to gradient descent and mini batch optimization. With the gradients computed, we update the parameters using gradient descent as shown over here. And N is the learning rate where we have the learning. Uh, this is not called as N, but we, for simplification, we call it as N over here. Where N is equal to 0.5 is the learning rate. Controlling the step size of the updates. In machine learning, gradient descent iteratively minimizes, minimizes the loss by moving in the direction of the negative gradient, which points towards the local minimum of the loss surface. We use mini batch, gra mini batch gradient descent with a batch size of 128. Full batch gradient descent using all 50, 56,000 examples is computationally expensive, while stochastic gradient descent, one example at a time, introduces high variance in updates. Mini batch gradient descent balances these extremes to process 128 examples per update, reducing computational cost and stabilizing, stabilizing convergence by averaging gradients over the batch. This ap approach is a standard optimization technique in machine learning, offering both efficiency and robustness. Training the network. Training runs for 50 epochs, where each epoch involves passing th through the entire training set. For each epoch, the, we divide the training data into many batches of 128 examples, compute the gradients, and then update the parameters. Every 10 epochs, we evaluate the loss for the on the full training set. The initial loss is 2.3, which aligns to the random predictions. With 10 classes, uniform probability of 0.1 per class is a cross entropy loss of this. By epoch 50, the loss drops around 0.02, which we'll see here in this code that we'll be running now soon indicating significant learning the network adjusts its way to assign high probabilities to the correct classes as evidenced by the loss reduction in machine learning this convergence demonstrates that gradient descent is effectively op optimizing the parameters however a very low training loss suggest may suggest overfitting necessitating evaluation on a separate test set to access assess, necessitating evaluation on a separate test set to assess generalization evaluating the model we evaluate the model on the test set, which is of 14,000 examples, where forward propagation generates the prediction by selecting the class with the highest probability. Predicted class is this as shown, and the accuracy, as we all know, is the number of correct predictions over the total number of predictions into 100%. The network achieves a accuracy of around 97.7%, indicating strong generalization. The in machine learning accuracy is a suitable metric for balanced data sets like MNIST. The high performance is due to the use of ReLU, which mitigates vanishing gradients and mini batch gradient descent, which ensures stable convergence. Further improvements can could be involved like adding more layers, implementing dropout for regularization, or using advanced optimizers like Adam. We understand that we have seen the mathematical exploration of building a neural network from scratch for MNIST classification. We derived the equations for forward propagation, cross entropy loss, back propagation, and gradient descent, grounding each step in machine learning theory. 
The resulting model achieves 97.7 percent accuracy, demonstrating the power of these fundamental techniques. This now paves the way for exploring advanced topics like deeper architecture, regularization, and optimization problems. Now that we have understood the theory, let's move on to the actual code implementation in Google Colab. So now I'll just change my runtime to a GPU as we have a batch size of 128. And once we have this connected, we'll be having a, we'll be running all the code cells that we have already set in place. So now we try to understand each code cell. But in the first code cell, we have imported the data set, and these are the other import statements that we have. And then we have normalized these over here, as we have read over here as well. And then we have split it across having test size as 20% and uh, test size as 20%, and the training size as 80%. And then we have one hot encoded the labels as well, where we have know now that the digits are 10, with the training and testing as the same. Now we define the ReLU, the softmax, softmax function, and the cost function as well. And now that we know this, we move on to the learning rate, which is 0.5, and the epochs are 50, and the batch size is 128. So the number of batches as is divided, as you can see here, by basic logic. And now we move on to the actual epochs training, or this is where the machine learns through the epochs. So now the whole epochs are getting run. So I'll just show you all what's going on over here. So we understand that there is a forward pass happening and there is a backward pass happening and the updated parameters are as such where we can compute the cost on the full data set using basically we use that for logging and we use this basic uh, logic for printing epochs for every after every 10 epochs. So then after this, we'll be plotting the uh, actual loss that we have had over the time period. And then we'll be evaluating the same over a test data set and we'll be displaying some of the test predictions. Be before we go and, uh, see the results, we actually see that we have, I have already written the formulas over here and I'll be sharing this notebook with you all as well. Now let's wait for the final epochs to be run. And now that that's been run, we see that the cost or the loss fun has reduced by a, a lot over 50 epochs. And now the accuracy as we see is 0 0.9, 0 0.9770. And we see now that a prediction run over here is that for each 28 by 28 pixel image, the actual prediction is given out quite correct. 